Haha, <laughs> what a great morning! You're having your morning breakfast on the porch while sipping on some delicious green tea. It's a perfect day, aside from that raging sandstorm just a few feet from your face, along with dust twisters and electrical outbreaks. But apart from that, nothing beats a stress-free morning. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you're living inside your bubble. Literally. It's a huge bubble engulfing your entire house, so that nothing can enter. You continue your day by working on your house and disinfecting everything around. You start with the kitchen, then move on to the living room and bathroom. You've got used to that routine in a long time, happily living in your own bubble. All the neighbors got used to you and just mind their own business when passing by. But after the sandstorm settles, you suddenly notice some sand particles on the outside windowsill. You freak out and begin knocking down everything in the way. You hastily put on your hazmat suit and some disposable towels and immediately clean it up. Afterwards, you head down to the basement to the fire incinerator and burn the towels away to leave no evidence behind. All is well, but you need to figure out where the dust came from. You stay up all night looking at every nook and cranny where you might find some dust. And to your luck, you find it. You grab some strong adhesive glue and seal that baby up. Ah, you can finally sleep. You shower at least three times a day and walk through the disinfectant channel just in case before going to sleep in another bubble. Before you close your eyes out of exhaustion, you hear a notification from your phone. You're grumpy and don't feel like checking it. You'd have to get out of the bed bubble and disinfect the phone and take another shower before going back to bed. But the phone rings and you have no choice but to answer it. This is shocking. You're overwhelmed. You're almost crying of joy. Your long-lost sister just found out where you are and wants you to come visit her in the city. Question is, how are you going to leave your bubble and head all the way there? You start panicking. You feel itchy all of a sudden and your throat is dry. You can almost hear that adhesive glue ripping apart and all the dust and bacteria flooding inside your house. You can feel them crawling up your skin and seeping inside of you. Wait, get out of your trance, it's all in your head. And luckily, you prepared something for a scenario like this. It's time to enter the workshop. It's deep down underground that requires you to take an elevator three stories down. It looks like a secret lab. You take a long walk to the end of the workshop and see a human-shaped figure. You click some buttons and open the metallic human-shaped chamber. You've been working on this bubble suit for years, and it's time to put it to use. Although it's only a prototype, you have no time to spare. You haven't done enough tests to confirm its durability. You put it on, and you feel like a superhero. It's covered with a strong, flexible bubble material that can stretch with your every movement. It has metallic frames on the joints for protection, just like knee and elbow pads when riding a bicycle and a large metallic cover for your head with an internal screen to see the vitality of the suit and other functions. It has two clean oxygen tanks that can last for a whole day. And as a backup, it has a strong filtration system to breathe oxygen from the outside world. It's even connected to your phone to access your contacts. You take your first steps, and all seems well. You look kind of intimidating in the suit, too. So you make some last-minute adjustments before leaving your bubble house. The exit has three disinfectant chambers with a voice-activated door to make sure no one can break in. This is it. You're shaking. Your legs feel like wet noodles, and you're sweating profusely. But you take your first step in the outside world and walk in the open land. With all that technology, you'd think you'd have a bubble-protected vehicle. But since you never needed to leave the bubble, there wasn't any use for investing in that. As you walk further away from your house, you look back and see it standing all alone. Good thing you keep your automated butler to do the cleaning while you're away. And you're able to keep up with it through the internal screen in your bubble suit. You check your systems and you're still well calibrated. A cute dog approaches you and gives you those irresistible eyes. You try to resist all urges to pet it, but finally break. You pet its head a little before it tries to rip off the bubble suit. It manages to get its teeth on it, but you run away. You open the GPS and it shows that you're a couple of miles away, but the only way to get there on time is to take the subway. 
You make your way to the nearest station and walk down the stairs. It's dark and murky, the floor is sticky, and there are many dark corners with people giving you nasty looks. The lights are flickering everywhere you go. You make it to the terminal and wait in line, or at least what you think is a line. As soon as the train arrives, it turns into a mosh pit. Everyone pops out from different corners and rushes their way in. Like a small crack in a river dam that suddenly explodes without warning. This is the first time you've ever been around so many people in close proximity. You're pushed and tugged, but somehow manage to get on the train. You refuse to sit down on the stained seats and try your best not to hold on to the railings. You see all kinds of people sitting and standing. Many of them are dressed in suits, casual outfits, swimsuits, and some are even playing music. You can't help but bob your head to the beat and even tap your feet. Hmm, the outside world is pretty cool. Suddenly, your screen pops up, and you're notified that one of the oxygen tanks got a small fracture and is leaking. You're left with one more tank that will last you half a day. The train arrives to the destination and everyone begins to exit. All the pushing and shoving leads to outside, but you trip and fall on the ground. (sighs) No scratches. The screen doesn't detect any damage. You go back to the surface and open up the GPS. You're only a few blocks away from your sister's apartment. You're running out of oxygen, and you don't want to think about breathing the atmosphere around you. Mm Mm-mm. You make your way towards the apartment on foot. You see some cyclists speeding around you and a construction site not too far away. But suddenly, the GPS malfunctions and you don't know where you are. You're in the middle of this chaotic scenery and don't know which apartment block she's in. There are hundreds of buildings all around you. You try calling your sister, but your phone is off. You approach a person showing a picture of your sister, but she just thinks you're crazy and brushes you off. You're all alone in the big city with your oxygen tank depleting by the second. Maybe you shouldn't have left your bubble. Suddenly, you see your sister walking back from a grocery store, carrying paper bags full of goods. You run up to her and freak her out. She drops everything, but you help her pick up the bags. She sees your face behind the screen and smiles. You finally reunite with her and go to her place. And to your surprise, she's also in her little bubble. She lives in a bubble-contained apartment that's disinfected from floor to ceiling. You're able to open your suit and breathe. You enjoy a nice day with her and even stay over for dinner. You charge up your suit and see the vitality is in proper condition. After a while, it's time to say your goodbyes. But the emotional moment is interrupted by breaking news. You check your phone and see that the world is now being covered by an unknown gas that's infecting everyone on the planet. You and your sister put on your suits and head outside. The world is rapidly changing, and you seem to be the only ones ready for it.